we're going to be looking at how to make searchable research questions, a cold concept organizers. So it, it is hard to get focused when you are doing literature searches, but there are ways to get started. One of them is by writing questions that are easy to break down into concepts and easy to search with. And of course, to do that, we will use concept organizers. And let's take a look at a question. So let's say that I'm interested in looking at how the quality of sleep affects strategic decision-making and risk-taking behaviors. Is this a focused searchable question? We've got about four things we can really look at. How does the quality of sleep for whom or what? And then how do we measure the quality of sleep? Of course, what is decision-making and what are the risk-taking behaviors we might be interested in? Let's take a look at all of them. The first one is the most decisive, the most exciting. So not only are we asking about how to quantify the effects of sleep, but we need to ask on whom? Is it humans that we're worried about? So this is a question about population. And population is who you are studying. And it doesn't have to be humans. It could be rodents. We could even look at social insects. So deciding on the population is absolutely key. And that will in many ways determine how we're going to answer two, three, and four. So thinking about the quality of sleep, we should definitely ask ourselves, what are we looking for? Healthy sleep? Or are we going to be going with instruments that are self-reported? We have decision-making, right? So again, we have to ask ourselves, if we're studying humans, what kinds of decision makings are we studying and so forth? And there are many different kinds of scales that we could use for that. And then finally, risk. There are specific kinds of risk behaviors, such as gambling. So what else can we make a note of? Well, definitely the participants, also the selection mechanism of the participants. And are we going to have a control population? Are the participants healthy? thing that I mentioned is studying human decision-making processes and scales. You can go to the decision-making individual differences inventory. So could we write a more focused question? What would it look like? In the case of a literature review for empirical work that you're conducting, you can definitely do a more focused research question and then conduct both sensitive and more precise searches. And we've talked a little bit about that. So how could we write a more focused question? Well, first of all, we select participants based on what you're interested in, and we could go as, as fine as selecting the age bracket. We look at a specific kind of quality of sleep. So in our case, let's select sleep deprivation. Quality affects outcome, right? So it's not a specific outcome we're looking at, but rather we are looking at scales that will allow us to determine the quality or maximizing, in this case, the amount of winnings in their gambling. So our question now looks like this. How does the quality of gambling decisions change as a function of stimulant use for healthy sleep deprived adults? So why are we looking at stimulant use? Well, we know that the quality of sleep is going to change the quality of the decisions. And we know that stimulant use can improve cognitive function, right? So we want to see whether or not gambling decisions change when we give our participants stimulants after they've been sleep deprived. You may want to look, for example, at a specific gambling inventory. So you may be looking at performance in gambling measured by, let's say, the specific Iowa gambling task inventory. Uh, and how does that change as a function of caffeine or other stimulant intake for healthy sleep deprived participants aged 18 to 65? So you see how you can move from a specific but still fairly open literature search question to a question that is really very precise. So now let's grab a concept map organizer. It's the simplest organizer that helps us to break down the concepts in our question into the most significant concepts. The very first thing we encounter here is the quality of gambling decisions. So I'm going to just put in gambling decisions. Now, what are we doing? What's the intervention? Well, it's the use of stimulant to improve the quality of decisions. So we've got the thing that we're measuring, gambling decisions. We've got our intervention, stimulant use. Now we've got our population, right? So we've got healthy adults and there is a condition that they have, which is sleep deprivation. The next thing we want to do with our organizer is to think about broader and narrower concepts or synonyms that can be used to describe the four that we've selected here. So we can look at risk taking, which is much broader. We can look at gambling addiction, or we can just look at general gambling behaviors as opposed to decision making. Now, when we're looking at stimulants here, we can get very interesting and very creative because there are different kinds of stimulants that we may have easy access to caffeine, and here are a couple of specific amphetamines. 
So we also want to know a little bit more about sleep deprivation. And here it, it is fairly specific, but we may want to again go broader for sleep quality, sleeplessness, and chronic lack of sleep. Now what we can do is once we've split up these parts of a question into a simple organizer, we could use an organizer that helps us with research decision making. And these are incredibly common in healthcare research. So I really want you to be exposed to this because as you move on and start working in healthcare context, the PICO or PCOAT organizer is extremely common. So the main thing about the PICO organizer reminds you about making sure you've got a population making sure you're thinking about the control, and then thinking also about the type of study. So here's what we've done to our question. So for the population, we've got our healthy adults, and we still need to know more about the selection and recruitment mechanisms. We've got our intervention, which is administering stimulants. We've got our control, which is the group that gets the placebo. And again, they're both healthy, sleep-deprived participants. And we want to see what our outcome is, and that is how the performance on the gambling tasks, as measured by one of the inventories, changes with the use of stimulant versus placebo. And the type of study, in this case, it is going to definitely be some sort of quantitative empirical study, a type of analysis tool for research questions that is very popular in qualitative health research is the SPIDER. The SPIDER stands for sample, phenomenon of interest, design, so that's research design, evaluation, and research type. So our sample, again, is our healthy adult individuals and that are recruited a certain way. We've got a phenomenon of interest, so the effect of stimulants or placebos on gambling decisions for our sleep-deprived adults. Now, when we look at the outcomes, so when we do our evaluation, we really want to know whether there is altered cognitive performance as a result of the stimulant uh, intake for our sleep-deprived adults. And finally, for a research type, we want quantitative research, but SPIDER is also very used for either mixed methods or qualitative research. So this is it. This tells you, first of all, that there are ways for you to try to break it down and tease out what really interests you about it and what are the important points about it that may be implied. What we're going to do now is to do a recap of some of the search terminology. And by the way, I will provide a fillable Word document with concept map, the PICO organizer, and a spider so you can play around with your research questions. So remember that searches that are inclusive and really try to tease out all the literature on the topic are called sensitive. And precise searches, on the other hand, return a few well-defined results on a topic that's usually well-known. So in your case, when you're doing a major literature review, you do need to run some sensitive searches to really explore your topic. But very often, you will still run precise searches before, during, and after. You never run just one search. You use both. Now, to improve the sensitivity of a search, using Boolean operator OR is always the best strategy, as well as using several different databases. If you want to improve precision, using the AND operator and um, using further limits are always the best strategies. Now, let's look at a couple of these examples. So if you're just running a search for alcohol and homicide, what happens when you expand alcohol to alcoholic, alcoholism? or intoxicated intoxication, or drunk drunkenness, or inebriated integration, and so forth, and then you end it with homicide. What do you think you're going to get? So remember, when you're using or, or is more, and every time you get more results, you get sensitivity. Now, what about this? If you're looking for alcohol and violence, and you change your search to look for alcohol and violence in Canada, well, you're actually making the search more precise because you're adding more limits. So every time you add a limit, you make a search more precise and, and you get fewer results that are more focused. 